before we begin, I'm um, still sort of getting over pneumonia that I'm looking down with last week. So I'm going to be talking a little bit wider than I normally would. So if you have trouble hearing, don't be afraid to just to figure out. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like the yes. Uh, and so uh, this week we are talking about uh, the second part to. Uh, Chapter 2 of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Here we have a picture of uh, ancient Ephesus right here. Father Young just informed me that he walked these very steps. So if you want to go on pilgrimage to walk in, in his holy footsteps, you <laughs> can go. Christ and to read 
more of our scripture. It says, And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the house of God. Is everybody following at this point? So, the distinctions between Jew and Gentile uh, are completely removed in Christ. But the question remains, how are they removed through Christ? St. Tertullian says he was born in a singular way from a virgin, by the Spirit of God. He was born to reconcile both Gentile and Jew to God, both of whom had offended God. He reconciled them into one body through the cross. <laughs> Enmity was in this way slain. This reconciliation took place in his flesh, through his body as he suffered on the cross. Jesus Christ was a Jew. He was born uh, to Mary, who was a Jew. His foster father was also a Jew. He was raised in the Jewish tradition, worshiping uh, as his father did. But when Christ died, he did not die just for Jews not die just for these people of the promise. And that's because Jesus didn't just take on a Jewish body. There's no real difference there. Jesus took on just a human body. And by virtue of his flesh, he opened up salvation not just to Jews, but to everyone through his flesh, his incarnation. His incarnation made him acceptable not just to the people of the promise, the people of the circumstances, but the people who were near and the people who were far off across the ocean in Ephesus and even farther into Italy and Spain and eventually across the entire world by virtue of his humanity. He shares humanity with all of us and opens his way, his salvation to us by giving up his life on the cross. The cross is absolutely So on the cross, Jesus doesn't re resemble uh, necessarily just Jews. He resembles all humanity and offers himself for the sake of all humanity on the cross. Yes? How did the Jews offend God? Was it through taking the laws to the extreme and becoming too focused on the laws and not... Mm -hmm. Well, the Jews had done quite a bit uh, throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament to offend God, uh, whether it was through their own unfaithfulness, worshiping other gods. And then, yes, in the time where Jesus is running around with his disciples, the Jews had sort of turned a corner. Not so much as turning away from God, but they were so focused on keeping the letter of the law that they forgot the message that the law was actually pointing. And that's to be a holy people living lives of love uh, towards one another and to one's neighbor. They, they became too focused on those actions. So, Father Young said, you can say that the Jews failed in their mission to be a light to the nations. But that didn't stop Jesus in Christ's saving work. Jesus renewed that life. So, through Christ's death on the cross, we Gentiles are brought into the household of God. And here, Paul is speaking about the church. And this is a major theme of his letter to the Ephesians, um, is what it means to be the church that is established by Jesus Christ. What is our relationship to Jesus Christ as a church? So Paul begins talking about that here. He establishes the church as the means through which Christ's work continues in the world. So, once one thing, what is the one thing that Jesus tended to always say when he was running about in his ministry? I probably could have worded that better. <laughs> Feed my sheep. What did Jesus say when he began his ministry? He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come here, has 
from is at hand. Repent, for I bring the kingdom of heaven with me. <laughs> what is the kingdom of heaven right now? It's a participation in the life of Christ. Jesus Christ, coming down from heaven, brings it with us and offers it to us through his death and resurrection. And our entrance into this kingdom of Jesus occurs at our baptisms. So notice how the message, uh, Jesus' message is, repent for the kingdom of heaven is drawn near. Well, when he ascends into heaven, the church has a different message. The church says, believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. <coughs> because belief in that is our entrance into that kingdom that Christ brought with us. And he established it in his church to continue his ministry. Does that all make any sense? So, he establishes the church, and we're, there are four marks by which we can describe the church. And we say them every Sunday uh, in our creed. Yes, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. These are the four marks of the church. And when we see all four of these marks, we can be assured that this is the church that is speaking to us. So Paul is going to further develop this idea in chapter 4, so I don't want to jump too far ahead. But the church is one. And you can understand this by listening to Jesus' words. By He says, no one comes to the Father except for me. Jesus is the gate. He talks about this in John chapter 10, talking about uh, the gate to the pastures up, letting the gates in and out. Jesus is the path to salvation. The only path to salvation he gives us. And we know that there is one Lord, Jesus Christ, one faith that he brought with him, that he established on the earth, which is belief in him, and then one baptism into that faith. The church is one. Next, the church is holy. Think about it. The church is the body of Christ. And what is Christ but both human and divine? It is a perfect welding of the two. And that's why we can speak of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Because we participate in that kingdom here. But it's also in heaven. The church is holy because it was created by God the Father. It, was loved, it is loved by God the Son and guided by God the Holy Spirit. There is an intimate relationship occurring in the church um, through Jesus' relationship with us. <laughs> and finally, we ourselves are made more holy through our participation in the divine life of the church. I go to church on Sunday by receiving Holy Communion. I being baptized, prayed for, and praying for others. Going to confession. All these are ways in which we receive the certain means of Christ's grace, or whereby we are made more holy more like him. We are transformed into his image by participating in the life of his church, which he guides. So, the church is holy. The church is also Catholic. Catholic comes from the Greek word katapolos, which is literally translated according to the whole, but it's best understood to mean universal. Jesus' church is not just for the Roman culture of a certain period. It's not just for a certain time or certain people. But really, our Christianity, our faith, transcends being American. It transcends ethnicity. It transcends whatever culture you exist in now. We believe the same God that was there all those thousands of years ago and is present with us at the same time. Finally, the church is apostolic. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. There's a story from John chapter 20 that you may remember that we studied last year. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive 
the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Christ did not just come to earth and then leave. He established his leaders to act with his authority even after he was gone. And Paul was very concerned with upholding this ministry that Jesus himself established. And that is giving his authority to his apostles. And they were given the authority to preach, to offer forgiveness, to celebrate the Eucharist, and administer the sacraments. They were the guardians of what Christ himself taught them because they lived with Christ. And then, in turn, these apostles handed off the faith to their successors. And then that happened again and again and again until today. And you can see right there an unbroken succession that authority that comes from Jesus Christ all the way to Bishop Iker and now Bishop Reed. We are a part of that apostolic tradition. So, things we know about the church. It's the body of Christ. It is Jesus' new creation. It rests on the authority of the apostles that was given to them by Christ, and then pass on to their successor. It's guided by the Holy Spirit. It is the holy temple of the Lord, the dwelling place of God. And by virtue of our baptisms, we are built into that temple, Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. And we live in that temple by living into Christ, by taking part in his divine life, by growing in our relationship with him daily. Everybody following? Any questions? So, oneness, back to oneness. It's nice in theory, but hard in practice. We believe that the church is divine and guided by the Holy Spirit, but it's still filled with extremely imperfect people. I mean, just look at Father God. <laughs>
people, particularly Christians, are always on the search for truth and a better understanding of who God is, and they make mistakes. A lot of heretics are pretty well-meaning, but they make mistakes. And so, that leaves it up to faithful Christians to point out these mistakes. To say, no, you've turned away here, you've made a mistake, we need you to come back to the tradition, the received tradition of the church. And so, that can often uh, help. And the people will say, we'll recognize the error of their ways, and they'll come back. Paul uh, encouraged this in a couple of his letters to people who were causing divisions and were mistaking the faith. He said, no, turn them out. Let them understand what they're doing wrong, and then bring it back in. So, division occurs when those who are mistaken refuse to return to orthodox belief in practice. So, this brings us inevitably to the lawsuit. Have we, have we caused a division in Christ's body by leaving the Episcopal Church? No. The answer is a resounding no. We remain faithful to what Christ himself established. The Episcopal Church began decades ago reinterpreting scripture and the tradition that they had received and modifying its beliefs to accommodate uh, cultural pressures around it. We in the Episcopal Diocese of Fort Worth said, no, you are changing the meaning of scripture. You are changing the meaning of what family is. And we cannot abide by it. And so, no, we may have left the Episcopal Church, but we remain faithful to the received tradition, to the faith that was handed down from Jesus Christ himself, as is demonstrated in that chart. The division was caused by the people who broke away, who broke away from the gospel that was taught to them, that was entrusted to them. So, have we caused division? No. We are victims of it, and we're fighting it. But, our duty is to always stand firm, guard, and preach the truth with love. With the love of Christ. Not wavering or trying or making excuses. But saying, no, this is what we've received. And this is what we are going to continue to preach. Despite being sued. Despite losing our property. Despite any sort of cultural pressure we can stand firm because those faithful Christians who faced wild beasts all those thousands of years ago, they stood firm as well. We can do that as well. So, the church remains at union with itself so long as its members remain faithful to its founder and cornerstone of Jesus Christ. <laughs> he is our identity. He has brought us Gentiles into the promised Alright, thank y'all. Are there any other uh